Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Brian LeCount. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good afternoon, Brian. I'm great. Brian, I'm excited to talk to you. You're working in an industry that has been very much at the center of a lot of people's lives uh, over the last couple of years. Brian is the Chief Marketing Officer at Health Carousel, and we're going to be talking about what healthcare is doing, especially in the digital travel nursing space, and really kind of the broader challenges that uh, we're seeing in the staffing and recruiting area. It's been a, an interesting moment. But before we get there, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Sure. Um, well, I uh, uh, spent most of my career, I'm, I'm Cincinnati born and raised, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, went to school here, uh, had a couple of jobs here, and then spent a, a, a huge part of my career, probably 17 or 18 years in um different, a couple of different marketing um, and advertising agencies. Uh, one of them uh, was my own uh, way back in the day, um, serving small to mid-sized businesses. I had a great time doing that. And then I went to work for um, a large uh, globally held advertising agency that through a couple of transitions uh, became part of Gray out of New York. Gray Advertising is a pretty famous or famously effective advertising agency as they like to call yep. themselves, uh, but had a great 10-year uh, run uh, there and uh, got to work on many really great global brands, household names we all have in our in our homes and in our pantries and and had a chance to meet some really great people that were doing uh, phenomenal things at those companies and got to take part in a lot of really great work, strategic work, digital advertising work, uh, some software development, mobile application development work. Um, and the agency world is just super exciting. I, I don't think there's any other place where a marketer can get the, the number of reps or at bats uh, at solving strategic marketing problems than being at an agency. You could just get to work on a portfolio of clients. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the agencies, so. I mean, Gray is a, is a world-class uh, company and, and certainly the projects that you've worked on. Uh, line up perfectly, I guess, really for with the challenges that you face now as a chief marketing officer at Health Carousel. So tell me more about what you're working on at Health Carousel. Well, it's definitely different than than agency life, um, but um, yeah, but just as great of a, a challenge, I think, in in a lot of ways. This is uh, about three and a half years ago. Um, I made the move out of agency and, and into uh, Health Carousel. Um, in fact, I used to uh, work for the CEO, uh, the former CEO of Health Carousel, who's now our chairman, uh, Bill DeVille, about 20 years ago in his first travel nursing company. And mm -hmm. we stayed friends and colleagues for a long time. I did some additional consulting work for him and, and uh, several years ago ran into him on an airplane on one of my agency life jaunts to another city and, and uh, saw him and we started talking again and there was a great opportunity to come, come join Health Carousel and be a part of the next stage of the company's growth. The company's been around for, uh, I think it's about 18 years now. Uh, and so I joined three and a half years ago to lead the marketing organization and also uh, take part in uh, our digital transformation as a company. Uh, and the so goal there is really to uh, deliver a platform, a set of platforms and experiences for healthcare providers, predominantly nurses, that make it faster, easier, more enjoyable, more successful at finding and selecting and applying to uh, assignments all over the country. Um, and so we've been building that platform for a number of years and, and uh, fortunate to be able to take part in some of that work. So I don't know if the word exciting is the right word at this time, but certainly nursing has been uh, at the center of a lot of discussions that we've had over the last couple of years because nurses are in high demand, certainly needed. And as far as I can see, will be really critical, more critical than ever before over the next decade. So tell me more about what you guys are seeing in the broader landscape right now. Sure. Well, our, you know, our, our purpose uh, as a company um, is stated as uh, improving lives and making healthcare work better. Um, and we really do see that as our job to do in the world. And we do that uh, by making sure that every patient in the United States that needs care has access to a healthcare professional when and where they're needed. 
um, and through temporary employment solutions, workforce management solutions, specific staffing offerings, we place healthcare providers, we place nurses um, and others um, in uh, assignments around the country um, at the greatest moment of need. Uh, you know, our, 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 our current CEO, John Sebastian, um, said something really impactful not long ago. He said, you know, when people spend time in the hospital, you know, as a patient and they recover and they come out of the hospital, they often don't talk about the types of equipment in the hospital and how great that was, or um, they don't even particularly talk about the room and how nice it was. What they talk about are the people and the care that they received. And it really is the entire experience and the ability for that patient to actually get well again um, is based 100% on the team of healthcare providers around them. And so every opportunity we have to put a nurse in a facility where they're needed means that that nurse is going to take care of people that need it. It's going to impact that person's life. It's going to impact the lives of their families and their communities. And that's very important to us. We, we actually track that um, as one of our most important uh, metrics as a company, the number of patient lives that we have impacted. Uh, and we're yeah. thrilled to have just crossed the 10 million mark in patient lives that that we've touched through placing our healthcare providers and and having that kind of impact on people and on communities does make uh, healthcare staffing very exciting. You know, living through this pandemic, we've seen the challenges certainly in the broader healthcare system, nurses being certainly a critical part of that frontline uh, workforce. Tell me about how the pandemic has reshaped the marketplace for you guys. Sure. Um, well, I don't think any of us uh, would like to live that that experience again uh, yeah. of a pandemic, and certainly nurses would like to not have to do that that either. You know, it was um, I think you know in one uh, amazing moment you had the demand for highly qualified nurses skyrocket uh, everywhere in the country almost at once, and the demand for nurses kind of followed the spread of COVID, you know, mm -hmm. with it starting on the West Coast, it moving to the East Coast and becoming very, very severe on the East Coast and, and then kind of Southeast and then throughout the, the middle part of America. And the demand followed that spread of cases. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we had hospitals all over the country at different times. And then, you know, after a while, all at once, uh, asking for much more help in finding qualified nurses to staff their facilities. And mm -hmm. so you had a, a travel nursing industry that, while quite large, um, you know, by itself, uh, relatively small in the grand scheme of total working nurses, you had it become a far greater uh, uh, solution during a pandemic mm. period than it had been in the past. Uh, it takes a long time to for hospitals to recruit full-time registered nurses and to hire mm -hmm. them. And uh, and it's much faster to bring on a, a travel nurse in this case uh, for an acute need that hopefully only lasts a few weeks or a few months. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic lasted longer than any of us would have liked. And we certainly had different waves uh, of spikes and, and troughs in the, in, in the pandemic. And the 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 industry kind of followed that and the demand kind of followed that. There were periods where the demand was um, uh, uh, more than it had ever been, and then it cooled off a little bit. And then, you know, with, with each variant, it kind of came back pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but it did change uh, uh, the industry quite a bit. It, it, it really, you know, if nothing else, it, it demonstrated how important strong healthcare staffing partners are for facilities because they're yeah. never staff you're never going to staff a healthcare facility at the peak level all the time you're also never going to staff it um, at the lowest level of need all the time you're going to try to staff it in the middle somewhere and then address mm -hmm. the the ups and downs of patient census with temporary workers like travel nurses um, and so a pandemic really tested the travel nursing industry's ability to respond very, very quickly uh, to recruit and qualify and credential nurses faster than uh, we ever had before and to deliver them in different parts of the country on a moment's notice. And so I are think you finding now, Brian, is there is there a shortage for travel nurses? Are we seeing nurses switch into travel nursing? What's the what's the status there? 
Sure. Well, well, overall, uh, the nursing industry has experienced a shortage of qualified nurses for decades. Right. Uh, that, that is not new. The pandemic certainly uh, exacerbated, exacerbated it, yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I think what we saw during the pandemic as well, you know, in any other market where demand skyrockets and supply is low, uh, the available supply is going to go at a premium. And so we had travel nursing uh, uh, bill rates and pay rates uh, going up significantly during the pandemic because there's a limited quantity of people willing to uproot their life and go to another part of the country to work. Um, and so hospitals were paying premiums to uh, secure those nurses and in a lot of cases competing with each other for the same pool of talent. And, uh, and so that drove bill rates and pay rates up for travel nurses during that period. And, uh, and as you would expect, full-time staff nurses were kind of looking at what was happening in the travel nursing industry and saying, gosh, I, I never wanted to travel full-time, but maybe I could do it for three months because the yeah. pay is too hard to ignore. So we, we definitely experienced that. I think COVID added, there are some estimates, as many as 80,000 additional travel nurses to the wow. industry that were formerly staff nurses uh, that chose to leave those positions and go travel at least for a period of time. And and do you see uh, the nursing schools having uh, a candidates that are coming up through the system that are going to be able to get us closer to meeting demand, or are we are we really facing a big shortage here? Uh, we are facing a big shortage. The shortage yeah. is going to grow. Uh, there are some some charts out there that show the the widening gap between the number of travel nurse openings that exist in the U.S. and the number of people being hired for those openings. And that gap continues to widen. One of the causes of that is that adding supply is very, very difficult. Um, and, and how do you add supply? You you educate more nurses, you graduate more nurses year after year when the average age of a nurse is you know, in the in the mid 50s, uh, those nurses are going to be retiring at accelerating rates. And it yet it is those nurses who are often in leadership positions in hospitals and that are also faculty at nursing schools. And so mm -hmm. nursing schools have limited ability to take on larger and larger classes of students every year because uh, retaining their faculty is becoming just as difficult as it is to retain nurses at the bedside. Uh, so so it, it, uh, there, are, there are a number of different contributing factors, but the ability to accept more nurses into nursing schools and graduate more or the yeah. ability to is part of the problem as well. So, I mean, clearly a, very much of a need for what Health Carousel does in the market to assist with all of these shortages and these challenges. But as you look forward, Brian, what does the near future look like for you guys? Well, we think that the pandemic has uh, forever changed uh, how nurses want to work. Uh, we've all seen the headlines of nurses being burnt out, uh, mm -hmm. overworked, felt like they were in uh, maybe unsafe staffing situations with too many patients per nurse um, on the unit that they're working. Um, and really, they're reconsidering whether they want to be in this profession or whether they want to be at the bedside. And we think that, mm. that you know, the pandemic is really what's done that. And so 20 years ago, if you said to an ask the nurse, what was her vision of her career? It probably involved graduating school, going to work at a hospital for five, 10 to 20 years, or a couple of hospitals in a full-time capacity. Today, if you ask a nurse what her uh, vision of her career is, we think it's very different. Uh, mm. Some of them are considering leaving the profession altogether. Some of them are considering leaving the bedside and looking at other ways to remain a nurse, like in telehealth types of occupations or other things like that. And some of them are thinking, well, I never plan to travel all the time, but travel gives me a lot of flexibility. Maybe I could do this for longer than I thought. And that right. allows me to avoid some of the things about being a staff nurse that that made it difficult on me. So we think that the um, the the uh, the gig economy is forever uh, permanent in healthcare. It's always been a presence um, in the healthcare space, 
but we think that the pandemic has, has, has made it more significant and more permanent. And we think the opportunity mm -hmm. is really about how do you wrap a set of career uh, experiences around a nurse over a period of years that can add up to a really fulfilling uh, career as a nurse but uh, do that in some non-traditional ways. Maybe there's a nurse that wants to travel for a short period of time, a couple of months, a couple of years, but then decides to put roots down in a location and build a family and won't want to change locations all the time. There's ways that staffing companies can put that nurse to work on other temporary type assignments, but maybe longer term in nature, one-year assignments, two-year assignments, things of that nature. We also believe that there are periods in a nurse's life where they want to advance their education, go back to school, get their master's or get their yeah. doctor nursing practice. And there are some ways to wrap an employment experience and an educational experience around that for that nurse uh, that uh, that is unique. And so we think, you know, much like in many other industries like IT, where being a quote unquote gig worker is very, very common, a collection of multiple assignments and together that forms a great career. We think that opportunity is here in nursing. Uh, and yeah, I mean, listening to you, I, I can start to almost see a very different future for how people would manage their nursing career altogether. Right. I mean, one that reflects more, perhaps, perhaps is uh, strangely enough, more human. It reflects their life stages that they would go through and the, the things that they would prioritize at various moments and sure. having a, an outline of the uh, or a healthcare structure that can support that is incredible. I mean, and that's clearly what health carousel is, is helping, helping structure and also helping staff. Brian, it's been great talking to you about health carousel. If, if someone wanted to learn more about what you and the team are working on, where's the best place to reach you? Uh, best place to find us is healthcarousel.com. We're also on, on uh, every social channel, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, and, uh, and LinkedIn. They can find more about us there. We we continue to hire internally as well. We we are building our internal technology teams, our finance teams, our product management teams, uh, our marketing team. Uh, we need great people um, across a range of different uh, groups in, in our company. And, and our ability to find those folks is really going to help us have an impact you know, on the world that's that's more significant in the future than it has been in the past. And, and so look forward to continue to do that. It's been great talking to you. I appreciate the time. Yeah, Brian, it's been great talking to you. And, and clearly, I would say you're working at one on one of the most critical issues that we face, certainly in the healthcare space right now. We've been speaking with Brian LeCount. He's a chief marketing officer and the VP of digital travel nursing at Health Carousel. Uh, health Carousel is a top 10 leader in the healthcare staffing space in the U.S. and internationally. And we've been talking about, in particular, the nursing space, the, the challenges that travel nursing has uh, in terms of finding great candidates, getting those places filled, and, and really where Health Carousel is helping fill that gap and, and hopefully building a brighter future for this industry in, in general. Brian, thank you so much for being on Uncaged, and we look forward to having you back. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Cheers.